So right now, a pro boxer and fitness influencer is under arrest, accused of cyber harassment. Local 10 Samir Nefsi is joining us. He's outside the jail in West Miami Day with this story. Samir. Christy, so that pro boxer and social media influencer accused of leaking sexually explicit photos of a female and putting them in an online group chat. Of course, now she is behind bars facing a serious charge. Fitness and generally influencing is a pretty toxic place to be on the internet. We have all sorts of people publishing all sorts of content, some good, some really bad. It's an okay place, but it can turn into a very bad place very quickly. Not only that, but in the past few months, we have seen a number of influencers have a hard time staying straight on their moral compass. We see things all the time of influencers who simply could not stop themselves from texting minors or influencers who could not stop themselves from throwing crypto scams or in general money scams at large telling people they have cancer when they actually don't we've seen scams at large about people's character and what they're doing with their character and one of those individuals within the fitness influencing community is stephanie cohen of course i had everything pulled up and then i fucking closed it Imagine that. Now, if you don't know who Stephanie Cohen is, she is quite a interesting individual. Her physique is really well renowned because it's a bit odd, but people really like it and kind of a lot of sexual deviancy within her profile. To be honest, she posts a lot of suggestive photos, just like this one, talking about how she really enjoys Diet Coke, but this seems to be implying a little bit more in a weird kind of way. I don't know. But she's a really impressive gal. World-renowned powerlifter, 25 world records, in fact. And she also now is a competitive fighter. And she does pretty damn good, to be honest. She kind of kicks some ass sometimes, occasionally. And she tries to teach people all about how to be healthy, lift in a way that's going to be conducive to muscle gain, and also try to dispel any myths that have been generated within the fitness community, which I'm all for. I think there's so many myths that have been generated, and the dichotomy of online fitness is just so vast and expansive that you can't have enough of content calling out things like salt isn't the enemy for high blood pressure and things like this or there is a best way to lift to lose fat and it's arguably just not lifting to lose fat it's burning more calories and all these really cool things that are important to state in uh, almost a matter of fact but get really lost in the weeds for general population people when they're looking for fitness content and as she has 1 million followers she's a really powerful person to be doing this kind of stuff she has influence with females and males to publish stuff that could be considered helpful. But just with all things we seem to talk about on this channel, some good comes with a hell of a lot of bad. Stephanie Cohen didn't just stop there. No, her boyfriend had actually broken up with her, and she was pretty upset about this. So upset that in fact, she posted nudes of her ex's girlfriend on the internet as a way of getting revenge. As she said many times in posts about her ex-boyfriend, she's so against pornography and he loved it. He was all for that stuff. She also very obviously talks about OnlyFans models as being a very bad thing for society. And she thinks it's not great. She makes posts sort of sarcastically poking at OnlyFans models and the people who subscribe to OnlyFans as sort of a way of saying, ha ha, you guys are idiots. But then she goes and just posts nudes of another woman on the internet as if it's not similarly related. Stephanie Cohen had learned in March of 2022 that her ex-boyfriend was dating the victim of who she published the photos of, and allegedly she gained unauthorized access to his computer. Now, to be honest, he's an idiot because he left it at her house for that long, but also he didn't have a smart password. She had said that she gained access to his computer by picking some of the most basic password combinations, and generally, she found the one that worked. From there, the authorities say that she accessed iCloud and was able to see current photos that he was taking, and thus, she had found photos of the victim completely nude. She distributed them through various group chats, online forums, and probably much, much more. Here's where things get really interesting, because seeing someone who's jacked in an online personality, you would think, well, she might have some personality traits that are a bit aggressive, a bit competitive. I mean, she's a power lifter. She lifts more weights than some men can lift. She fights. She probably has a pretty contentious attitude towards some things, right? And I would actually argue that that's not true within most people who are either fighters or power lifters or bodybuilders. But in this case, I think it is right. You see, she didn't just stop there. An officer spotted Cohen outside of her home and informed her that she was under arrest. 
However, the police say that Cohen did not reply. In fact, she kept walking towards her residence, but at a faster pace. An officer caught up to her and told her that she was not allowed to enter the home, but Cohen said that she would not go with the police and began to physically resist the arrest. She tensed her arms and tried to prevent the officer from handcuffing her. Cohen, who first gained professional fame as a powerlifter and then turned into a professional boxer, then tried to leg sweep the officer in order to get away. Now, here's where things even go up another whole level. After she was handcuffed and placed in the police vehicle, she attempted to unlock the door with her toes, and then from there, she physically broke the door's locking system. But even with her attempts to escape, which is simply a useless attempt if you're in a police vehicle, please take it from anyone who has general intelligence, trying to escape from the police is only going to lead you to more miscommunication and mischarges. If you simply just allow them to take you wherever they're taking you and then hear them out for what they're talking about, your chances of talking through any form of miscommunication would be a lot better. In this case, she obviously didn't listen to this. So she got arrested, right? And when you get arrested, you're allowed to keep your phones. Sometimes you're even able to post bail and get out of jail while your trial is pending. This is inevitably what she did. And immediately as posts were made about this thing that had happened, she took to comments on multiple Instagram posts saying that anyone can be falsely accused of a crime and even arrested. I don't know truly about, I mean, sure, there has been some false false accusations in history, it's pretty fair and square what happened. She continues to say that these are only allegations from a vengeful ex-boyfriend, simply allegations and we will fight them all the way. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, we've all stayed tuned and it's not gone well for you. See, Cohen was actually charged, according to court records, with offenses against computer users, which is a felony. She also had a charge of cyber harassment, which is a misdemeanor. She had another misdemeanor of criminal mischief, and she had a charge of resisting arrest without violence. Now, I believe they offered her a plea deal, which was basically to say, if you admit to distributing the footage you found on your ex-boyfriend's computer, we will drop the charge down to resisting arrest to resisting arrest without violence, which is much more subtle and would likely lead her to a much less consequential sentencing. So after all of this, her nice and shiny record on Instagram and her being an influencer and a powerful female character kind of went down the shitter. Man, I mean, you really gotta fuck it to post someone's porn on the internet. I don't know, that's that's some wild shit. I don't really see how it gets you revenge either because, well, yes, it does sort of humiliate the other person. You also kind of inevitably with hashes and all of these things that we have in modern technology and photo image searching these days, just kind of condemn yourself. Everyone knows who posted it and it gets out very quickly and it's also a felony now. So the downsides far outweigh the benefits. I mean, I think the better choice would be to glow up, to do something in impressive to then get a boyfriend who's much better and all of these things unless in fact you're actually completely incapable of doing that Stephanie which was actually probably the case with your fake lips and forehead and all. I know this is relatively old news but I think it is critically important to talk about because this is a person who still gets a lot of infamy on the internet today for things that she did which are absolutely disgusting and horrible and even tried to resist arrest. This is a person that people find as a acolyte to their own fitness journey right and I, I think that's uh, a pretty toxic thing. It's a pretty toxic thing that people still look up to this person when she's clearly a awful, vindictive, and vicious person who doesn't know how to control her own emotions. Do you know how to control your own emotions? If you don't, you should subscribe to this channel and like this fucking video too. It would be great. It helps me get pushed to the algorithm. And to be honest, it's completely free and helps me tremendously get my subscriber count up because that matters on YouTube a lot, actually a lot, like so much. It's kind of actually crazy how much they make it matter on YouTube. So please help me out. And if you're even further interested, we have a Discord group down below where we discuss things like this and many other topics related to fitness and bodybuilding in which you can get direct help with your own fitness and bodybuilding journey from coaches and way more good stuff that I can't talk about on YouTube.